Hi folks, once again today we have a new video from BP Earthwatch talking about Comet 209P Linear and making false claims once again about the size of the comet and when we might encounter meteors from the comet. So we're going to go through this video and I'm going to address the claims once again. But before we get started, I'd like to address BP Earthwatch himself. He's apparently been watching these videos I've been making because he's been leaving comments on the videos, which have been kindly hosted by other channels on my behalf, including Dazza the Cameraman and Cosmophobia. And uh, friend, these friends of mine have been nice enough to host these videos for me. And I asked them to do this because they have more experience than I do in dealing with false copyright claims. And I feared he might try to use copyright as a weapon to get these uh, videos taken down and silence all opposition, just like he does on his channel, where he blocks anyone who points out his mistakes. And sure enough, he's been making comments on these videos, trying to intimidate them into taking the videos down. In fact, he sent a message to Daz of the Cameraman today, uh, in all caps, screaming at him, claiming that he filed a form with YouTube, uh, that the videos are stealing his content, and he's going to get them taken down on that basis, on the basis of copyright violations. Well, it's not going to work. Uh, we're not going to be intimidated because this is commentary and criticism, which is explicitly protected as fair use within copyright law. So, yes, this, uh, these videos do use segments from your videos, but that is explicitly protected for the purposes such as criticism and comment. That is exactly what this is. And uh, the segments I use from your videos are for the purposes of commentary and criticism. Now, I wasn't going to make another video today talking about your new video here because, frankly, it didn't really bring much new to the table. Uh, but since you've decided to try to intimidate my friends and uh, try to threaten us and lie about filing copyright forms with YouTube, we received no notification of any such uh, copyright forms being filed with YouTube uh, or any notice given to us. So because you did that, I'm making another video here. And once again, it's commentary and criticism. It's protected as fair use. So if you try to get this video taken down or any of the others, uh, counter notices will be filed and you will start to put yourself at risk for losing your channel. And I know you make a fair bit of money with that channel. That's probably something you don't want to risk, which is probably why uh, no notice was received from YouTube of any such form being filed which suggests you're trying to bluff us and lie to uh, intimidate us into taking the videos down ourselves. Not going to work, pal, because uh, we know how this works and the law is on our side, not yours. Obviously, you can silence all the criticism you want on your own channel, and you do. Uh, any comments pointing out your mistakes uh, will be removed and blocked. I know you love to do that. But you don't have that power beyond your channel. You don't get to silence other people's videos simply because you don't like what they say, uh, pointing out your mistakes. That is not what copyright law is for. It's not to be used as a weapon to silence criticism. And criticism is specifically protected. So uh, good luck with that. Now with that, we're going to address the claims you make here in this latest video. Uh, you start off showing Stellarium here and 209P. So Clearly, you have software to figure out where 209P should be in the sky. So it's strange that you haven't uh, bothered to put uh, put this at the perspective of Stereo Head and see that what you're showing on Stereo Head is not actually 209P at all, but a different comet entirely, Comet Lovejoy, which you are aware of. Um, so you spend about the first half of the video here. Um, basically describing the fact that the comet is circumpolar at the current time, and it is, it is circumpolar, and uh, that makes it very convenient to observe because uh, most of us here in the northern hemisphere can observe it all night long. Um, yes, that, that was kind of handy for my own observations of the comet uh, when I measured its size. So let's move on here to the meat and potatoes of this video where you start to talk about uh, when we might encounter meteors for the comet. So I'm just going to play the video here and uh, critique it. Now, let's look at this linear debris field, kind of look at where we're at in time. Now, I'm going to bring this up and look at it a little closer. You've seen it before. I just want to point this out. That uh, The first date, February 18th, we're past that, of course. And April 18th would be the yellow line that's behind that debris field. 
March 18th would be cutting that in half. Now we're at March 12th, so we're in between that. Notice how close to the 12th is into entering that outer debris field right there, guys, as we break this down. Okay, so he's trying to suggest we're about to enter the debris field from Comet Linear. Now, this chart shows meteoroid streams left by linear over, uh, over time. In fact, some of these meteoroid streams date back as much as 200 years ago. This is not something that came off the comet anytime recently. Uh, but it, what it actually shows is the distance of the meteoroid streams from Earth's orbit, not from Earth. There is a big difference, once again, between the distance between an object and Earth and an object and Earth's orbit. So if we look at another similar chart for the Leonids, you can see it explicitly says here, the vertical axis shows the minimal distance between the trail particles and Earth's orbit. Earth's orbit, not Earth. So that answers the question of why we didn't get a meteor shower from 209P in 2012. You can see that uh, the part of the chart he doesn't show in his video shows that meteoroid streams crossed our orbit in 2012. So why didn't we get a meteor shower then? Because you can see here the purple line, which signifies where Earth crosses that point, did not coincide with the meteor streams. So in 2012, Earth missed that entirely. And it was here again in 2013, and there's no meteor stream there. But oh, look, 2014. Now we have the possibility of a meteor shower. And if you uh, view an expanded view of that, you can see, okay, so there is a possibility that in May we might encounter meteors from this uh, this comet. Uh, this is a projection of the potential for a meteor shower because we really don't know what the activity was of the comet 100 to 200 years ago. It could have been completely dormant for all we know and left nothing behind. But there is a possibility we could get a strong meteor shower out of it. And uh, they give some of the details here, the uh, expected radiant coordinates uh, and uh, the zenith hourly rate as much as 100 meteors per hour. I've seen estimates of 200 meteors per hour by some papers, but uh, it's also acknowledged by all that it could be much less than this. We simply don't know whether or not the comet was active or not at all or not 100 to 200 years ago when it was laying these meteor streams down. But once again, we are not necessarily, in fact, we're simply not going to encounter meteors for a starting tomorrow or any time this month. Uh, what he's showing over here is the distance between some meteor streams and Earth's orbit, not Earth. Again, Earth is designated by this purple line going through here, purplish, pinkish line. I don't know. I might be colorblind here, but um, this line, this vertical line here, is when Earth crosses this point of closest intersection. And it's only when the meteor stream crosses that line that you have the potential for meteor shower. So he gets that completely wrong and rather deceptively omits this entire half of the graph because if you were to see all this, it kind of begs the question of why didn't we get a meteor shower from this comet in 2012? And, well, there's your answer. Now, obviously, uh, if you look at the ejection velocities that they show, uh, the, the gray tone of the, of the meteor streams here indicate a lower ejection velocity. And... Uh, generally lower density, so it would be expected that even if we did get a meteor shower in 2012, it wouldn't be as strong as the one we might get this year. But even so, uh, what this chart actually shows is that there was no potential for a meteor shower in 2012 or in 2013, only in 2014. That's why this is uh, potentially new. So um, let's move on. So this is the day, and this is the one we got talked about it. Look, according to these charts, some of that debris was here again peaking, not until May. Okay, so once again, he's trying to insinuate that they're somehow lying about it being in May, that this is actually occurring sooner than that, much sooner than that. And no, they're not lying about it being in May. They're not lying about the orbit of the comet. You can determine that with amateur data. Uh, again, in a previous video, I showed this before. Uh, you can calculate the orbit of the comet based on amateur data alone. And using that, we can find that uh, it actually matches up with professional data quite well, uh, extremely well, in fact. 
The answer given here for the coordinates of the comet are within a fraction of an arc second of what you would get if you went on to JPL and got the coordinates from them. And using these coordinates, you can confirm that the comet is where it should be. I took an image of the comet. I took an image of the comet at the time seen uh, in those coordinates. Let me go back there. Just one more time so you can see the coordinates of the comet predicted by the amateur orbit. 7 hours, 24 minutes, 16 seconds right ascension, 72 degrees, 49 minutes, 42 seconds declination. And the coordinates that it was detected at are a match. And you can see the comet right here. Now the comet's size, he shows it again. He's not only... I'll get to more of this in a second, but what he's showing here is a picture of what he claims is the comet, and it's it's 2.1 million miles wide. Here's what the comet actually looks like. This is a picture I took of the comet myself. And the size, the radius of the circle, is 7.3 arc seconds. So the diameter of the comet is about 14.6 arc seconds. Now, given the distance of the comet, which again, you can calculate using the amateur data, at the time the image was taken, that was 0.61668 astronomical units. If you calculate the uh, the actual size of the comet, what you get is about 4,000 miles. That's it, not 2.1 million. Now, what he's doing to get that number is he's basically calculating the distances between uh, the meteoroid streams that have been left by the comet over hundreds of years. Not the comet, but he actually shows a picture of the comet and claims it's 2.1 million miles wide. He's essentially trying to claim that the comet itself is the debris field, that they are one and the same, and that you can see them in the stereo images, and that's what he's following in the stereo images, and it's coming right for us and all that. No, they're not the same at all. That is probably not even... Uh, Comet 209P linear. If he's pulling that from the stereo images that he was pulling before, what he's actually showing is Comet Lovejoy. In one of his other videos, he shows what he claims, again, is 209P linear here. You can astrometrically solve this image, and using that, you can determine the coordinates of the comet within the image. So here are the coordinates of the comet within the image, 13 hours, 35 minutes, 47 seconds right ascension, 16 degrees, 35 minutes, 45 seconds declination. And you can figure out what should be at those coordinates at that time. And it turns out at those coordinates at that time is C2013R1 Lovejoy, a completely different comet, uh, a much larger comet than 209P linear. So that's what he's actually been showing in his videos, and it is not 209P linear. Uh, now, he also shows here in a second what he claims is a radar image of the comet. With the debris field, you've seen this before, 2.1 million miles. Now, it's colored mosaic, and it shows that the peak again is the 24th there. Let me back up here a second. It says the night of numbers of 1,000 per hour. They've also added it to the uh, meteor shower dates for 2014. Notice this. Now, notice that says the night of May 23rd, and that matches the uh, radar image that we've seen before i'll show you the colored mosaic and it shows that the peak again is the okay this is not a radar image this is the result of a simulation uh that was designed to determine when we might run into the meteoroid streams just like you saw a second ago and what the rate would be so here's the figure he pulled uh, for his video from a paper describing the potential for a meteor shower from 209p linear, but it is not a radar image as he claims. So you can see here in the caption it's figure 2, and if you scroll up and you look in the paper where it describes figure 2, what you find is that the word radar isn't mentioned anywhere. It's a simulation. It's a numerical simulation integration uh, to predict what to meteor, meteor streams we might encounter and what the rates might be. And what they conclude is that uh, we might encounter as many as 200 an hour, 
However, because we don't know what the comet's activity was hundreds of years ago, we can't say that for sure. And in fact, they conclude that a meteor storm is unlikely. So temper your expectations on that. Now, it's still quite likely that we might get a meteor shower out of it, maybe even a very good meteor shower. But uh, don't count on a meteor storm necessarily. Uh, these guys conclude it's, it's actually pretty unlikely. You won't find BP Earthwatch telling you that, though. You'll find him telling you that this is a radar image and that they know it's coming and that it's 2.1 million miles wide. And then he'll show you a picture of the comet and claim it is 2.1 million miles wide and that it's uh, a cloud of debris and it already broke up. And he knows that because he looked at this chart. And what this chart actually shows, again, are the meteoroid streams left behind by the comet hundreds of years ago, not the comet itself. And what it's actually showing here again are the distances to Earth's orbit, not to Earth itself. So unless you see this purple line intersecting the meteoroid streams at the point where they cross this uh, zero line distance to Earth's orbit, then you don't have the potential for a meteor shower. And that is why we didn't get one in 2013 or 2012, but we might get one this year. So that's what this chart is actually showing. Uh, again, don't Leave it to BP Earthwatch to tell you that. Uh, he doesn't seem to be working on the basis of honesty here. In fact, he seems to be working on the basis of intimidation and lies and everything else uh, to try to silence all opposition because you find when you do a little bit of digging uh, that he's not giving you the truth. So keep that in mind, and I hope you all have a nice day.